Okay, so we talked about the um, sensory innervation, we talked about the sensory receptors and the musculoskeletal innervation, and now we're going to bring it all together into function and clinical application. So the function of different diameter axons, large diameter afferents, transmit information from specialized receptors in the muscles, tendons, and joints. So those are our Roman numeral 1 through Roman numeral 4. The 1As and the 2s are in the muscle spindle, the 1Bs are in the Golgi tendon organs, and the 3s and 4s, well 2s, 3s, and 4s are in the joint capsules. And those are all giving us information um, from our um, muscles, tendons, and joints. The smallest diameter afferents can convey nociceptive and temperature information from both the musculoskeletal system and the skin, as well as crude touch information from the skin. So the larger diameter axons, the faster ones, are largely um, involved with sort of our non-conscious responses to um, position sense and correcting our posture and muscle tone. The smaller ones are more of our conscious touch and temperature and um, perhaps nociception. Um, so you can, the um, smaller ones, they're um, transmitting information slower. The larger ones have to be fast because they're feeding that um, position sense. And the, slow, the smaller ones can be a little bit slower, giving us that touch and nociceptive information. So, complete severance of a peripheral nerve can result in lack of sensation in that peripheral nerve distribution. Um, you can have pain associated with it. Um, sensory changes are often accompanied by motor and reflex loss. So, the sensory loss proceeds in the order of descending axon diameter. So, first you're going to lose conscious proprioception and light touch. Those are those larger diameter axons. Then you're going to lose cold, fast nociception, heat, and then slow nociception. So the slow nociceptors, those C fibers, those are the smallest ones, and you lose those last. What a bummer, right? So you lose all your sensory stuff, but you still have pain. That is just not fair, but there you go. That's the way it is. It has to do with axon diameter. So um, when we lose the proprioceptive pathway, um, we end up with what is called sensory ataxia. So ataxia, um, basically you can think of it as in coordination, disorganized movement, because we're not getting the sensation that we need to organize movement. Um, so ataxia, by definition, is in coordination that is not due to weakness. So there are three types of ataxia, sensory, vestibular, and cerebellar. Um, the Romberg test, where you um, do a single leg balance um, with eyes open and eyes closed, is used to distinguish between cerebellar and sensory ataxia. Um, if you can't, because um, the sensory information is giving us our position sense, if you close your eyes and lose your balance, then that distinguishes it as sensory ataxia. So vestibular ataxia means you lost information from the um, vestibular system and cerebellar ataxia is a central nervous system problem. So um, you can have ataxia from all these different areas, but if you're missing sensory information, that's sort of like the first level of ataxia. And of course, if you have in coordination, they want to distinguish is it a central problem, which could potentially be more serious, or is it a peripheral problem, a sensory problem. So. Um, that is how we distinguish between um, the uh, sensory ataxia and other types of ataxia. And so when we get to the vestibular and the cerebellar systems, we will talk about the other types of ataxia. So sensory nerve conduction studies are used to evaluate the function of peripheral nerves. So um, we know already that large diameter axons conduct the fastest. Um, Nerve conduction studies test intact nerves measuring the performance of large diameter axons. So um, you have um, sensors, you have a stimulating electrode um, distally, and then you have sensors at two separate recording sites, and it measures the conduction velocity 
Um, so it's the distance between the electrodes divided by the amount of time from stimulus to first depolarization at the rec uh, recording electrode. So basically, um, say that you have um, sensory loss um, in the um, C6 dermatome or the C6 peripheral um, nerve distribution. Um, so a lot of times with carpal tunnel syndrome you'll have that. You could also have a problem at the elbow, you could have a problem at the shoulder, you could have a problem at the, at the nerve root. So doing sensory nerve conduction studies, you're going to evaluate the peripheral portion of that, is where is the slowdown. So they have recording sites at different areas, and they're trying to find out where the problem is, and basically distinguish between um, carpal tunnel syndrome and a problem at the elbow or a problem at the shoulder or a problem at the brachial plexus. So the sensory nerve conduct um, conduction studies are used to distinguish um, between um, the location of where the problem is. So um, they end up with three numeric values. Um, distal latency, which is the time required for the um, depolarization evoked by the stimulus to reach the distal recording site. The amplitude of the evoked potential and the conduction velocity. Um, there are um, sensory studies that are used to evaluate central nervous system um, problems, and we will talk about those in the next chapter.